All right, I'm gonna redo my video on fire because apparently it was really laggy the first time. So I have my card flame scene open again. Um, and I am just going to, sure, save this here, which makes no sense, but whatever. Fire sim. I have given up trying to keep my computer organized at this point, and I'm just gonna go ahead. I don't need the cards at all. Um, and apparently I have three of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these, ah, uh, or hide these mesh lights for now. Um, I might need them later, and I know from doing this before that I, I did like the way that they looked better. So, what I'm going to do is to make any kind of fire sim, or pretty much most sims, uh, you're going to want to go to your FX menu, and there's a bunch of different stuff for like end cloth and constraints. In this case, we want the fluids tab, and you're just going to open the 3D container. Um, you, honestly, I barely ever open the settings for these. You can edit pretty much all of this stuff later. Um, and I, I'm usually just like, cool, let's just make a random thing. Um, so by default, it's going to dump this goofy little cube into your scene. Um, basically, there's two things in this. So you have the emitter. This is the thing that's going to, in this case, we're doing a candle flame. So this is what's going to basically shoot fire into your scene. And then you have the what's called fluid container. You can see there's like a little fluid one here with the emitter in it. Um, this is basically like the environment in which your sim will be calculated. Um, so, yeah, pretty much, pretty much that. So what I'm going to do is just sort of move this into place over my candle. Um, so like I said, any, anywhere, like if the sim, you know, passes this threshold of the top of the box, it's not going to calculate. So if you think you might have a really tall fire, uh, you're going to want a taller box. Uh, and in this particular case, so you could, there's a few ways to scale this that are not good, um, namely literally scaling your thing with the scale handle. Um, this is going to do some really weird stuff. It's basically going to make everything sort of stretch. It's going to look scaled. It's going to look really weird. Don't do that. If you need to modify size, and this is very important, go into your fluid shape and just modify the size here. So I'm going to be like, cool, maybe I want this to be 20 units high. And five wide is probably, f OK, maybe like seven wide is probably all right for this little candle flame. Um, and then you can just sort of move that my hotkeys are not working great. And you can just sort of move that up so it's sort of in the candle. Um, so this is going to be sort of where, again, where the flame is calculated. Um, so that is basically resizing these. Um, if you ever need to add more resolution to these, so if you look at the bottom of this little cubey thing, uh, you'll see that there is a grid. And this is basically like the resolution of your, your sim. Um, so let's go ahead and, and for the record, you can move this emitter anywhere you want. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and sort of put that down somewhere in the vague vicinity of the, the wick of this. Um, grab the emitter and move it up. All right. So, all right. So let's just run the sim. Um, a few things to be aware of when you're running a sim, you need to start at the beginning of your timeline. Um, or you know wherever you can set different start frames uh, for your sim. I'm not really going to go into that. Um, there's a, it's literally just like a tick box somewhere. Um, but just for the basics, you need to be at the beginning of your sim. You can't really scrub through a sim. Uh, for the most part, it will break the ever living bananas out of everything. Um, this one is so low res that it actually is letting me sort of scrub through kind of well. But you notice I can't like back scrub. Like if I go here. Uh, and then I go back, it like won't move. And you also can't jump forward in your sim. Um, so you can't just be like, cool, I'm at frame one. Now I'm at three, 350. And like, that's clearly not how that should sim. Um, so anyway, just go back to frame one. Um, you also want to make sure that your playback speed is set to uh, play every frame with a max of real time. Uh, if you go real time, sometimes it'll skip frames. And that'll screw up how your sim is calculated. Because again, it's skipping frames automatically instead of having you do it, but it's still skipping frames and that's bad. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and play this and we'll see that like this is nothing really interesting looking at all. It looks pretty terrible. Um, but this is a low resolution sim, just like a little goofy little box thing here. Um, we'll go back and let me add a little bit more resolution to this thing, uh, to my emitter box. Um, and you'll see it's also added some more resolution down here. Um, so let's go and do this. And this is taking, well, it's still simming pretty fast. But you'll notice there's like a little bit more resolution. There's like a little bit of, um, we have like more visible sort of trail. This is like a little bit thinner. 
Um, again, it's think of it like an image in Photoshop. The more pixels you have, the better resolution you're able to get. It also takes longer to, you know, save an image or open an image or render an image or whatever. Um, so that's basically that. Um, the other thing that I guess I want to touch on is I just scrubbed out of it. Um, but you'll notice like when it the the sim hit the top of this, it behaved as if it was a solid wall. If you want to fix that, oh, I forgot wrapping was a thing. That's so weird. Um, if you ever want to change that, go into the boundary X, Y, and Z, uh, and you can set these to be none, or you know, one side, another side. Um, wrapping is a little bit weird. I'll turn this on. So let me show you what it looks like without wrapping, and then I'll show you what it looks like with wrapping. Um, it might not even be that noticeable, honestly. But this is without wrapping. When this hits the top, it's gonna. It's not doing that thing where it like hits it and then disappears. It's just sort of continuing. It's not really simming it up here, but it's just sort of continuing as if that was like an empty, uh, empty area. Um, if we turn this to wrapping, it's going to do a weird thing, which basically turns your fluid container into the game Portal, uh, where once it hits the top, it's going to come back through the bottom of your sim container. You can see that little puff is just like continuing. Um, and honestly, I don't really know why you would want this. I've never found a use for it, but I still find it funny. Uh, every once in a while just to play with it for grins. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this back to none. Um, and then we can start doing actually fun things with our sim. Um, so let me go ahead and I will just go ahead and like sim this a little bit. Um, I'm just going to kind of go over the rendering and all of the other settings kind of at the same time because I feel like I always end up working on them at the same time. So the first thing I want to just note is that whatever you are rendering this with is going to look really, really different than how it looks in the viewport. So if it looks great in the viewport, it's probably going to look god awfully terrible in your renders. So it is very important to render this as you go. Um, and in this case, I have no lights in my scene. <laughs> oh, wait, yes, I do. No, I don't. I don't know. So either way, here's my candle flame. Um, you can see it's not really showing up. Um, I could brighten my light, but I'm just going to kind of leave it as it is. Um, actually, no, you know what? I'm going to be a real person and actually turn my stupid light up. Exposure four. Uh, okay, cool. So this looks, you can see we have, it's not really a fun looking sim. It's just sort of slightly grainier than the rest of the image. And this is currently our sim. Yeah, it's, it's literally not even, it's not even super visible. It's just grainier. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, all right, so there's a few things you can do to this uh, to make it look nicer. Uh, the first one is I'm just going to go ahead, if you go into your fluid container, um, I'm going to go in, scroll down, and look for, where is it, uh, shading. And I'm going to set, you can do different stuff for color. Um, so if you wanted to, like you could make your sim blue, you could make your sim a gradient from blue to purple. Um, and in this case, it's just showing up as purple because color input is set to constant. Um, there's a bunch of different stuff you can set this to, like you can set it to an X gradient. Um, you'll notice it might be kind of hard to see, but like it's kind of like purplier over here and then bluer over there. Um, y gradient will be a little more obvious where like lower down it's purple and then it gets blue. Um, where it gets really fun is if you set it to some of these sort of dynamically calculated settings like density uh, and temperature and all of that stuff. Um, as so you can see, like now, instead of having this very like weird linear transition, if we mess with the graph a little bit, we get the sort of dark purple in the center and then uh, blue on the outsides. And this is how you can use um, these to sort of like help push your sim a little bit more. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and turn on. We actually already have by default incandescence or glow uh, set up to be controlled by temperature. Um, if you wanted to, you could also make this density, and then it should get a little bit glowy. Let's see if it actually... Cool. So now we have this really terrible looking uh, purple flame that's just sort of here and terrible looking. Um, you will notice again, it looks completely different from it in the viewport. Uh, so do just be aware that that's a thing. Um, but all right, so I'm going to go ahead and set this back to temperature. Um, I also, just for fun, uh, you can render these. Like Sims will render stupidly fast in Maya software. Um, and actually, when I was in school, I used to just render most of this stuff. And this is 
this is pretty much the closest you're going to get to how it looks in the viewport is rendering it with Maya software. Um, sometimes there are some small differences, but for the most part, uh, Maya software is going to be a lot sort of closer to what you see there. Um, it also renders insanely quickly, and you can comp this into your scene later. Um, so it's actually not a bad solution to do things, in my opinion, as long as you're comfortable comping stuff together. Um, I'm kind of terrible at it, but, uh, you know, I do it, and yeah. Uh, mostly if I'm in a crunch for render time. Um, also do be aware that if you're setting, know what you're doing beforehand. If you set something up to render nice in Maya software, it's probably going to look weird in Arnold and vice versa. So it's not like, oops, my Arnold stuff is taking too long to render. Guess I'm going to use software because you might need to like tweak your settings for how that renders. Um, anywho, we continue. So I'm just going to go ahead and I guess show you some of these other random settings that we have. Um, the other thing before we do that that I want to touch on is the base resolution. So for the larger you make this number, the more detail you're going to get in your sim, but it's also going to take longer to simulate. Um, this is a relatively tiny little box, so it's simming pretty fast. Um, I'm actually, just for grins, going to set this up to 40, because I can. Um, also, anytime you change that setting, you're going to have to resim your sim. Um, but a lot of times what people will do is they'll work at, you know, 30 or 40, and then they might bump this up to like 80 for the final render. Um, at some point, um, and you kind of just need to like fiddle with this to see what makes sense, um, it will break down. Like if you if you're doing something at a base resolution of 10, and then you bump it up to like 100 or something crazy, that's gonna not make a whole lot of sense, because um, the base resolution of 10 doesn't really give you a lot of information about what's happening. Uh, I found doing something you know like 40, like 30 to 60 is good to sort of test things with, and then I'll usually bump it up to like 80 for my final sim. Uh, and that doesn't lose too much resolution, you just get a little bit finer detail in your sim. Um, anywho, so under contents method, we have temperature. And like I said, we wanted to control the incandescence or glow with temperature. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and turn that on. Uh, there's other settings for fuel. Fuel is basically, I kind of think of it as like fumes of gasoline, um, where at certain point, like they build up and then at a certain level, it will sort of combust when heat comes into it. Um, it's honestly been a while since I've worked on this, you don't super need to worry about it, but just know that you can use temperature and fuel in conjunction with each other, where um, you know if you have a certain concentration of fuel, which can be emitted slowly, um, at a certain temperature that you can specify, it'll basically combust and explode and like you can do all this crazy stuff with it. Um, I used to do a bunch of explosion stuff like that and it was fun. Um, all right, so if you go and you actually want to make the sim look like, you know, not just like a sad little blue puff coming out of your candle, um, you can go down into contents details. And these have pretty much little tabs for all of the settings up here, so you can modify them all cust uh, custom. So the first one you can look at is density. And that is basically the concentration of the fluids or particles in your sim. Um, also, if you look at this in wireframe mode, you'll see all the little like, goofy little particles just kicking around. It's kind of funny. Um, it can also sort of speed up your sim to an extent, kind of. Um, so we have settings for density. We have settings for temperature. Um, these are pretty much the same. Uh, they do basically the same stuff for each of them. Um, you just have control over each individual stat of your sim, which makes these pretty powerful. Um, so what I want to go over really quick is, and I'm going to set the, the bounding box to both sides for this. Um, what I want to go over is the difference between dissipation and diffusion. Um, buoyancy is pretty much how floaty is this. Density scale is, you can scale the density so it's more or less dense. Um, density pressure is basically, and every time I touch the setting it like blows up. But it's basically, um, you, can, you can do a thing where every setting, or like if you, I'll actually probably just show you this later, but you can do a weird thing where like you add, you know, 0.1 units of pressure every um, second of your frame, or of your sim basically, and then once it hits this threshold of one, so after about 10 seconds, it'll sort of explode and the density will like push away from each other aggressively. Um, I'll actually show you that now because it's kind of funny. I meant to set this to like point, let's say point 0.3. Um, so we're simming, we're simming, theoretically around maybe 120, we're going to hit that density pressure, maybe, and 
every time I try to demo this it doesn't work. Um, cool. All right, well, never mind. Um, but that's usually what happens. So if you ever see your sim exploding, check out the pressure settings. Maybe something weird happened to them. Um, anywho. All right, cool. So dissipation versus diffusion, which is where I was going in the beginning of this, um, is two ways to basically remove density, temperature, whatever, from your sim. So dissipation is going to be, if we turn this up all the way to, let's say, 0.5, um, so before you would notice that the, the sim sort of hit the top of this, sort of curled around a little bit. Um, with this set to around 0.5, you'll see that there's less, uh, there's less of this smoke stuff hitting the top of this container. If we turn this up even more, that tail is going to get even shorter. Basically what this is, is removing material, I guess, from your sim. Um, so it's, it's just gone. It's not being sort of dispersed into the environment. Um, it's a convenient way to sort of cap your sim off, in my opinion, like before you get to the top of this little box. Um, so that's dissipation. It's literally like chopping off material basically from your sim. It's gone, it's not distributed anywhere. Um, diffusion is distributed throughout the environment. So it's not, um, it's not so much getting rid of it. What it's doing is dispersing it through the environment itself. Um, and this is perhaps like a really weird example, but you kind of see instead of the sim going up like it did previously, it's just kind of like being absorbed into the, the nearby environment. Um, and eventually, so let me, let me go into my emitter really quick and just make more stuff emitted. Um, so if we play this, um, you'll see that it's sort of like just diffusing into the. I don't really know about it. I keep I keep using diffuse to describe diffuse, but like um, it just sort of disperses into the environment and it stays there. Um, so you can use this in conjunction with uh, the uh, dissipation setting if you want. Um, it doesn't super matter. Um, it just depends on what you need. Just be aware of like what the difference is. They're they're not used interchangeably. Um, so let's go ahead and just for grins, um, once I set my density up to four, you'll notice that now we have a much denser little puff being set up. So that's what it looks like without dissipation or diffusion. Um, and again, if we turn dissipation up, uh, you'll see that it's, this is going to start to just sort of disappear and like go away and eventually it'll just have like a long little candle tail just hanging out. Um, and again, diffusion is going to start sort of dispersing that into the environment. Um, so yeah, that's basically those. Um, and I did just go into my emitter, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the emitter. Um, but you can see there's, if you go just in by default, um, there's different types of emitters. You can do Omni, you can do Surface. Um, you can emit from this like little volume instead of just like a point. Um, and that is gonna look something like, honestly, it looks pretty similar to point sometimes, um, which is kind of weird, but yeah. Um, so there's, I mean, play with these. For this one, I think Omni is basically just like, again, a little point in this case makes sense because I just have a little wick. Um, you can also, if you're so inclined, set the min and max distances that your particles be emitted from the, the emitter itself. Um, so if I set this max distance to like six and this up to like four, something insane, um, what we're probably gonna get is nothing because that seems to be outside the bounding box of my sim. Um, <laughs> cough. Okay, there we go. Um, so you'll see that by, by playing with those, we get a much larger bubble of stuff, I guess, being created. Um, and let's see if we can, let's see if we can look down. I was trying to like look down through the top of this because what should be happening is basically it's emitting in like a loose sphere shape around this object instead of super close to the object itself. Um, we can also make this value smaller and get like a really like pinpoint emission if you want like a super aggressive tiny little candle. I usually just kind of leave these set to the default since I have a reason to change them. I feel like they, you know, gives a nice little smoky blob. Um, but there's also different settings here for, and this is, this is purely, this has nothing to do with how your sim behaves after it's emitted. It's just saying, hey, every, you know, frame or like every whatever I'm going to give you this many voxels per second of fluid. And a voxel is basically just a 3D pixel. Um, you can kind of see your little voxels down here based on like these little squares are like 
showing you where the voxel is. Um, so if you want, you can add more density. Um, there's different sort of settings that you can use for these. Um, no emission is not going to emit anything. It basically turns off the emit density. Um, add is normally what I leave it to. Uh, replace will sort of update constantly, and it'll like get rid of old stuff. It's weird. Um, for simple stuff, just leave this to add. It's fine. Um, and then you also, again, have settings where you can add more heat or more fuel or more whatever else you're, you're doing here. Um, so that's pretty much all you'd probably need to be doing. Um, you can also, if you want, add in turbulence to the emitter. Um, so that's theoretically, and I always have like, issues. But, I mean, you can see that's like giving a little bit more of like a speckly, speckly approach um, compared to what we had down here, which is like this very nice steady stream. So I usually actually do turn this on. I feel like it looks, you know, kind of nice. Um, and you can also mess with stuff like turbulence speed and all that good stuff if you're so inclined. Um, so that's basically the emitter. That's really all I'm going to super go into. I will say actually one more thing. I'm a liar. I always say I'm done and then I'm never done. Um, all right, so this is our current sim. It looks really bad. Um, I'm going to sort of fine tune the shading later. Um, but there's this detail turbulence, which you can turn up, which is basically like smaller turbulence, I guess. Um, I usually, a lot of times when I'm turning on turbulence, I'll sort of turn this on at the same time because I just, I like little teeny wispy things in my fire. I think it's pretty. Um, so I'll just sort of turn that on for grins as well. Um, so that's basically the emitter. And again, once those particles are generated, the fluid container and the settings that you use in there take over how they are moved. Um, so in the fluid container, more things to make the sim look less like a sad giant stick of candle. Um, and actually, I do, I'm going to set this back to one. I feel like whenever I set that over one, it I get less control of the area that's like closer to here. But you can, it's not going to hurt anything if you turn it up. Um, it's just, I like keeping it at one until I have reason to not keep it at one. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and run this. Um, my two favorite settings of all times for Sims, because I'm a spaz, is, and actually before I show you those settings, which are velocity and turbulence, I'm going to show you guys noise. Um, so I'll turn up noise in my density. And basically what this does is it's going to give like a little bit of sort of like jiggle, but it basically like runs this through a, a 3D noise texture as far as, my, I think this is how this works. But it runs it through a 3D noise texture and you can see that now there's like a little bit more irregularity in the flame. Um, which I like. I think that looks much more natural and interesting than it did previously. Um, but anywho, so my other favorite settings, I'll turn this down for now, are swirl and turbulence. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start this from the beginning. It turns swirl all the way up because I'm a spaz. Um, but basically, this is like another way. You get like these nice little sort of swirls of... Let me, let me tweak a setting really quick, and I will come back to the setting later. Ha ha ha. All right. Possibly excessive, but let's do the things. Um, but you can see you get these like really nice little eddies of sort of stuff in your sim. Um, sometimes if you set this up really crazy, like you'll notice it started blowing flames like through my candle. So that's perhaps turned up a little aggressively, um, but it basically adds like tiny wind and like that really nice thing. If you're like looking at a flame and it's kind of like spinning, not spinning, but like wiggling back and forth and kind of like you can kind of like see how the air is hitting it like that's kind of what swirl does um so depending and it's also not good to change these settings halfway through your sim for the most part um but so you can see if we set that a little bit lower the flame will get kind of higher and then it'll start sort of um dissipating and dispersing and you, you'd have that like little bit of jiggle in there i'm going to turn this up like a tiny bit higher um and say like, all right, like that's kind of nice. I kind of like that. Um, all right, so 2.877. I'll set this back to zero. And then, so that's uh, that's velocity. Um, you can also add velocity noise. Um, and this is calculated based on how fast the particles are moving at a given time. Um, so honestly, it's like, seems like it's behaving pretty similarly to swirl. Um, you can just like update these separately though. Um, I kind of think of noise. Noise, swirl is a more sort of like dynamic calculation, um, whereas noise is just like an extra way to get a little bit of extra like jiggle, I guess, into your flame. <laughs> I don't know if there's a better way to describe that. 
Um, so turbulence does a similar thing. This is basically like more intense environmental wind, um, which sometimes, depending on how lucky I am, does terrible, terrible things, and other times does very nice things. Um, it is also good to build your sims at scale, which this one is very much not. Um, so normally, like I could set this value higher, but I think my candle is like 10 millimeters tall or something stupid. So just be aware of that. Sims do care about scale. Um, but turbulence is like just kind of another different variation of wind within the scene. Um, velocity tends, in my opinion, to be controlled more by like the speed of the particles. Um, turbulence is more of just like a wind in the scene. It doesn't care about speed or density or anything else. It just sort of blows your sim around. Um, so that's velocity and turbulence. I'm going to go ahead and set this back up to the, the 0.28 because I like that value. Uh, and we'll go ahead and see uh, what we have here. And I imagine it's still going to look probably pretty, pretty gross. Did I? Ah, uh, yes, it did the, the fun thing where it just sort of didn't enter the value. Um, but you can see immediately how that sort of affects the shape of the sim. Um, anywho, let's see. Probably nothing good, but let's see how this renders. It's not terrible. It's a little crappy little flame. All right, so I'm going to go over some stuff about actual shading uh, and how to control how your sim looks, because this looks pretty darn awful. Um, all right, so we have our color, and that's just set to blue and purple because I'm a spaz. And we have the sort of glow here. Boop. Um, and you can set these all to be controlled by different things. Oh, that looks infinitely better, sort of. Um, so you can set these to be controlled by different stuff. So like I said, this uh, was color input. Originally it was set to constant. Um, I like just using this as a visual way to see where my stuff is denser. Um, you could set, if you wanted to, incandescence based on density, and that's going to give you a different look. Um, I like doing temperature just because I'm familiar working with it, but you could also do it by density. It doesn't super matter. Um, and the what you normally want to do with this is like, you know, based on where these sliders are, things are going to glow more or less. So basically this is going to be like your, um, in this case it's at the temperature, so this is going to be your extremely hot areas, like your hottest areas, and then this the black at the end is no incandescence in your cooler areas. Um, so just by sliding that slider up, I mean, we already get something that looks kind of more flame-like. Um, so what we're going to do is also look at opacity. And this is actually where the sims usually start getting, like, cool and fun looking. Uh, where I'm going to go in and just, like, pull up. If you click on this little bar here, it'll expand the graphs. So you actually have more control over what you're doing. But um, what you can do is go in, and I'm just going to sort of, like, click to randomly add points on here, and this is usually how I start doing this, honestly. Um, but what you can do is start dragging... Oh, I'm rendering full HD. No wonder this is... I'm like, this should not be taking so long to render. Is it... Wait, is this full HD? No, it's not even full HD. Fantastic. Um, all right, let's set this, I guess, a little bit smaller. Um, I don't know what that voice was. I apologize for that. <laughs> that was horrifying. Um... And then I'm just going to zoom in. So I, that was actually kind of dumb and probably didn't make a whole lot of sense, but whatever. Here we are. Um, boop. But like, actually, I don't know why this is being so ungodly slow right now. But anyway. Um, and in the interest of my computer is being trash, I'm just going to zoom in to this little area in the beginning of the flame. Hooray. Um, so again, this is the areas of highest... In this case, density. Um, opacity is set to density. Um, and then this is like the areas of lower. And you can see, like, if we delete this little notch I put in, um, look right in. What if I set this to. That's also not better. Yeah, that's just going to take forever. All right, this is frustrating. Um, so if we look like right in the middle here, when I add this area where it like pops down to no opacity, this is what's going to sort of push a lot of detail into your sim and like show the detail that's there. Um, you'll notice like we get that nice little uh, sort of transparent band, I guess. And if we just do this sort of between all of these and let that render, um, sometimes you need to go through and like this is highly dependent on how your, how your sim is simming, um, which sounds so dumb when I say it out loud. Um, so you might, like, if you change your sim, you probably will need to change this graph. 
Um, this one's actually doing a really not good job of demonstrating what I was hoping it would demonstrate. <laughs> um, but so like, let's go and just like pop in a bunch more little areas of no opacity. Um, and I'll let this render for like half a second. And you can see, I mean, this is not what I'd call a nice looking sim, uh, but you can see all the extremely pixely because I'm zoomed in like a maniac um, variation that we now have within this fire. So I'm going to go ahead and say, cool. Um, this is probably decent for now. Uh, what I'm actually going to do really quick is just, I'll show you how to finish setting up the scene um, for sort of a final render. And then if you guys are interested in sticking around, I'll refine this a little bit, hey, and make it look less gross because I don't like the way this looks. I think it looks terrible. Um, so let's do, what am I doing? Um, yes, let us get out of this and go back to our camera one shape. I'm just going to ignore the fact that the aspect ratio is terrible. So what we have basically is this little orange flame in a candle and there's just a random sky dome light just hanging out in my scene. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go in and wait, that's my flame. What am I doing? Uh, I'm going to go in and I have this exposure set up. Uh, I'm going to maybe take this down to like one just because I want the candle to be the main source of light in this scene. Um, and you can see that it's doing, it's like doing a little bit of glow and like a tiny bit of subsurface scattering. It actually doesn't look too bad on the, the candle itself. Um, but I would like more of this light to be sort of forced onto the walls. And to the best of my knowledge, I've not found a super great way to sort of forcibly make the emission brighter. Um, the other thing I do actually really quickly want to talk about is the input bias. Don't delete, no. Um, and that is basically, this works for all of these, but it's basically, um, think of it, it's sort of like shifting the area where it affects. So like normally, if you're, if you're right in the middle, um, a value of one is gonna be one, and a value of zero is gonna be zero. If you shift this, it's kind of shifting the, the color, or like where things are being used, if that makes sense. Um, but it'll sort of like crush values down. And I try my best to keep this at one because I think it's easier to work with. But sometimes if you're just like, ooh, cool, I want my flame to be like a little bit brighter or a little bit, you know, shift where it's sort of this graph is without manually shifting everything, you can mess with the input bias. Um, in this case, I think this is kind of funny. So I'm going to leave it at maybe like 0.2. Um, but anywho, so we want this flame to affect the candle as well as the walls. And this is actually why I left these stupid crappy uh, flame lights in here. Um, so I have these two, these two lights, um, and these are the, just those crappy little mesh lights that I made in the, the other candle tutorials. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn them back on, unhide those mesh lights. Um, so we have this trashy little flame, and this one should be affecting the walls. Um, so now we have this, oof, uh, this extremely orange glow, and our fire is green, which is, very questionable. <laughs> All right, so my light linking got a little messed up. So the original setup I had was you have this light and it only affects the walls and then you have this candle light and that should only affect the candle, but I think my light linking got messed up. So I'm gonna go windows, uh, relationship editors, light linking. I prefer light centric. And I'm just gonna grab this light and be like, apparently it's not affecting the wick or the wax, which is interesting because it's definitely affecting the wick in the wax. Um, and now it's not. Apparently I just had to click it on and then click it back off. Um, so I'll show you guys how to also make the flame and all that stuff not green. That's actually, I do like it, it looks cool. But anyway, um, so I also have this little candle light and this is the one that should only be affecting the candle. Uh, it's pretty much the exact same settings as the other one. It's just different light linking on it so that we have, uh, this is not affecting anything else. It's, what the heck is PQ1? What is PQ1? That's a, oh, oh, it's my molding. That's weird. This shouldn't be, oh, that's why my molding was brighter. That's awkward. Um, <laughs> cough. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, and what the heck is flame walls? I like made this scene 
a while ago, and now I'm just like, what is this stuff? I don't even see that anywhere. Oh, no, this is literally the mesh for the flame. Okay, wow. Um, cool, so nothing needs to be affecting that. So if we refresh our render view, uh, what we should have is a decentish looking little candle setup with a crazy looking green flame. Um, I am going to go through and just double check my mesh light settings. Um, I want to make sure that for both of these, the light is not visible because the sim is going to be acting as basically like the fake source of light. Um, so light visible and show original mesh are all ticked off and that's good. Um, when I was messing with this the other day, I actually, I'm going to go back to my light linking really quick. Um, I noticed that I wasn't able to hook this up to a sim. Um, so like I can't light link to a sim. Um, and I think the weird workaround that I did for that was going into the fluid container itself. And I could be wrong. It's actually really kind of weird that this is suddenly showing up as green. Um, and actually, let me... I have this weird theory that part of that might be somehow related to this color being uh, weird colors, but I think I'm also... Oh, great. Cool. It was just because I had asinine colors for my color. Yay. <laughs> that makes life easier. Cool. Um, Alright, well that was basically that, I guess. Um, so normally light does actually interact with your sim. Um, what you can do if you're like really hell-bent on turning that off, uh, in your fluid shape, if you go down to render stats, and there's individual ones for like Arnold and other renders, um, I usually just use these, but basically what you can do is turn off like cast shadows, receive shadows. Um, I don't really know why you'd want smooth shading for a sim, but now I'm intrigued that that setting exists. Uh, I'm going to leave it checked on for grins. Um, and actually, you probably should turn on like visible in reflections. Like if you, if you have a candle by a window, you would see that candle in the window. Um, but you can turn off like some of these settings and stuff if you, if you want to. Um, I also turn that on because that makes sense. So anywho, um, that's basically that. I'm just going to kind of go through and like refine the sim until it's something that I like. And I'm actually just going to be a real person and start a new video for that. So hopefully that was helpful in a weird basic intro to sims.